Um, hi, everyone. Welcome. How are you all doing this morning? Okay. Awesome. We are going to do an activity about one type of simple machine this morning. We're going to be looking at levers. So as a reminder, the materials you need for this, I'm going to put my screen down so you can see mine. Hopefully. Oh, no. All right, so you're going to need a fulcrum data sheet. This is sort of optional, but I would recommend having it. I'll share it on my screen in a little bit so you can copy it down if you didn't get a chance to do that already. Um, you'll need two pencils. I have one that's unsharpened and one that's sharpened, but if they're both sharpened, that's totally fine. It will work. You need a wooden ruler. If you only have a plastic ruler, we can try with that, but it might be a little bit trickier, so wooden is ideal. And you need a bunch of pennies. I have a ton of pennies. I'm hoping some of you were able to find pennies lying around your house. So you have some time, if you haven't been able to gather those materials yet, to do that now, while Peter talks through some of our recommendations for using Zoom. All right, thank you everybody. I'm going to share my screen for a moment so that if you don't have a data sheet yet, you can copy it down. If you don't wanna record your data, that's fine too. But something that scientists do when they do experiments is they take pretty careful notes on what's going on so they can look back at them later and do some analysis and get some information. Can you go ahead and raise your hand for me if you already have a data sheet? Does anybody already have this? Awesome, so I see Arlo's got a printout. We've got Charles raising their hand. So if you don't, it's really easy to copy this down. You're just going to need to draw a little table really quickly. And then right in on this side, we've got your four, six, eight, and 10. Awesome, I see somebody drew it as well. So that's perfect. I'm going to give folks one second to work on that using your pencil that you've gathered and your paper. How many pennies were people able to collect in their house? That was my challenge for all of you. Does everyone have some pennies? Okay. Yeah. All right, good. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing the data sheet. Peter will put, oh, you can't put a link to that. Never mind. Peter, can you put the PDF in the comments in the chat? So I will Peter, see if I can find that and get it all set up for you. Okay, yeah. sorry. It's okay. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about levers. Who's heard of a lever before or a simple machine? Yeah, so some people are raising hands. Does anyone want to tell me an example of a lever that you might encounter or any other type of simple machine? I'd like to. All right, go for it. It is a mechanism that moves. Right, so we do have some moving pieces. These simple machines are going to help us do work. They're gonna make it a little bit easier to lift loads and things like that. What are we looking at? What is this image of that I have shared on my screen? I see Jacob and Jerome, you have your hand up. Yeah. Go ahead and unmute yourself. A seesaw. A seesaw, exactly. So a seesaw is actually a type of lever, and it's the type of lever we're going to be working with this morning. So I just want to show you some key pieces of the lever, if I can get my zoom to work. There we go. Um, oops. Calm down. So we're going to talk about some key spots on our lever here. We've got this point, right? Where it tips back and forth, that is called the fulcrum. That's really important. We're gonna use a pencil as a fulcrum this morning. We also have two people 
on our lever. One person is lower down right now. They are acting as the force. They are doing the work. They are pushing down on that lever. So this person is our force. And then we have somebody being lifted up. That's our load. So something, what's another thing you might want to lift up with a lever that's not a person? Can anyone think of something? A car. A car, awesome, yeah. So people can't really just lift up a car and put it up high, but we might use a lever to get it up higher. Absolutely. Charles, do you have your hand up? Yes, Um, I think it could be a, didn't it animal? Yeah, maybe we could lift up an animal. So we think about ramps and things. I don't know if an animal would love being levered up, but we certainly could lift a heavier animal with the help of a lever. So we're going to experiment with some things right now. We're going to be changing the positioning of our fulcrum today and seeing how that affects how much force we need to lift up our load. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing and you're going to need all of your materials ready now. Here's the fun bit. I'm gonna lift my screen up so that hopefully you can all see what I'm doing instead of my face. I've got an interesting setup for that. Can you all see my materials? Peter's yeah. nodding, I'm gonna go with him. All right, so you're gonna need your data sheet. You're going to need to count out 10 pennies. Does everyone have at least 10 pennies that they can count out? All right, so everybody count out 10 pennies. Put those to one side of your bigger stack. All right, once you have those 10 pennies, you're going to take your ruler and I need you to find the one inch mark on your ruler. So right where it says one, you're going to put those 10 pennies. Um, how many, um, which number was it again? One inch. 10 pennies at the one inch mark. So 10 pennies? 10 pennies, yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Awesome. All right, we're gonna do this one all together so you can do it along with me. We'll probably do all of them all together. We'll see. You need one of your pencils. This is our fulcrum. This is our load. We're gonna be lifting these 10 pennies using our lever. And our fulcrum is what we're moving. So we're going to start with it at the four inch mark, just like our data table tells us to. So right under the four inch mark, I'm sliding my pencil. I'm gonna have you guys go ahead and do that too. So now this is starting to look a little bit more like a seesaw, right? We can imagine that this group of pennies is one of the kids. We've got our fulcrum all set up. If I add some force to this end, I can lift my pennies. But it's hard for me to measure how hard I'm pressing. So we're going to also use pennies as our force because we can count those. So you need to add pennies to the other end of your lever and count them out. So I've got two, three, and my load has lifted, okay? So it took me three pennies to lift my load when my fulcrum was at the four inch mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that on my data sheet. Right here, I have written three pennies for my four inch mark fulcrum. Did anyone get a different number of pennies? Then three, I mean, Grace, can you unmute yourself and tell us how many pennies you had? Two, it took you only two pennies 
And Oliver, what about you? Let's say our support. A four. Yours took four. Okay, I'm noting down all these different numbers and we're gonna come back and look at them in a little bit. I wanna see if we get different numbers for the other ones. Philip, you had zero pennies, huh? I'm wondering about your setup there. Let's see if it takes you some pennies to list it at the next one. So our next step, we can go ahead and take these three pennies off so our load goes back down and then slide our fulcrum over to six. I'm not gonna count out loud this time. I don't wanna confuse you and I want it to be a surprise, but I want you all to do this and then I'm gonna ask you to tell me how many pennies it took. So how many pennies does it take to lift your load at the six inch mark? We're right in the middle of our lever now. Okay, it took Elizabeth also three pennies was that on the four inch mark or the, I think that was probably on the four inch mark. Awesome, thanks Elizabeth. All right, oop, Philip almost. <laughs> there you go, Philip. How many pennies was that? Eight. Eight. So it took Philip eight pennies at the six inch mark. Did anyone get a different number than eight? See some hands. Gordon, how many pennies did it take you? Go ahead and unmute yourself, Gordon. Nine. Nine. Awesome. Nine. Charles? Charles, how many did it take you? I saw you unmuted yourself. It took me five. Five, cool. Wow, only five. All right, at the six inch mark, interesting. Do you have 10 pennies on the other side, Charles? Yes. Okay. Um, Jacob or Jerome, your hands up. Do you wanna tell us what you got? Yeah, and you can also drop your numbers in the chat. Elizabeth had 10, um, I had 10. Mom, Daddy, look at this one. Five. Five, okay, we've got another five, awesome. Anyone have a different number? So far we have five, eight, nine, and 10. We have another 10, awesome. All right, thank you, let's keep on going yeah. down. Rowan, you said 10. Two. Okay, lots of tens at our six inch mark, which is interesting, right? We know that there's 10 pennies on this side mm -hmm. and our fulcrum's right in the middle. So it's, it's like that seesaw, right? We're using about the same amount of force as, as load right now. What do you think will happen when we move to the eight inch mark? Do you think it will take more or fewer pennies to lift your load when we move our fulcrum mm -hmm. farther away? Does anyone have a prediction? Do you have a prediction again? And I saw you unmuted yourself. Nope, oh, that's okay. Charles. Now what place again? So we're doing the eight inch mark now. So it's farther away from the load than it has been before. So we're thinking it's going to take more pennies to lift that load. Is that our prediction? Does everyone agree with that? All right, awesome. So let's give it a shot. Let's see how many pennies it takes this time. I'm gonna just go ahead and plop 10 on mine to start because I trust your prediction. Oh my goodness. It's hard to keep count of this many. Wow. Oh, I got mine. It's going to take more than 10. Yeah, more than 10. That's a good prediction. Do people have enough pennies to do this one? 24. 
You got 24, okay. Mine took 27. Does anyone have a different number? You're all frantically going through your wallets and change purses and- My pile uh, just, my pile just, hold on. How many was yours, sorry, Ron? Gordon, what do you, do you, what was your count? I saw your hands up. 29. Whoa. 29, the highest yet. Anyone else? 27. Same as me, 25. awesome. 27, 25. Danielle and Nathaniel said 26. These are all pretty close together, but we're still getting some variation. So let's think about that. Down yet. Oh, you're not, you haven't gone down yet? What, are, what number are you at? Oh, I counted wrong. Mine was actually 26, but I don't think that for was our data. Why are we getting different numbers? We're all using pennies. We're all using a 12 inch ruler, unless is anyone using a 15 inch ruler? Oh, Vivian, your hands up. Did you want to share something? I think they're doing some penny retrieval. So what do people think? Go ahead, Vivian. I think that was Roan. Did you have something you want to oh, share? 40 pennies. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right, so why are we getting such different numbers here? Does anyone have any ideas? I have an idea, but I would love to hear other thoughts. All right, so sometimes when we do a science experiment, we have a little thing called human error. It's not bad, but since we're all doing this in different places, we can't see what each other is doing, it is possible that we're making some slight changes to our setup that we don't even know about. So we all put our 10 pennies around the one inch mark to start, but they might have slid. I put my 10 pennies in a tower on that one inch mark. Did anyone spread theirs out more or have a different configuration of pennies on the end? Did you all do a tower too? All right, uh, Jacob and Jerome. I don't know, are you Jacob or Jerome? You can unmute yourself. I'm Jerome. You're Jerome, okay. And what did you, did you have something to share? Yes, I I put, I'm still, I don't have enough pennies to, to lift this thing up. <laughs> oh my gosh, what what are you at right now? I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. <laughs> 27. Oh, so you're really close to the bottom. A lot of us had it tipped right around there. Oh, mine. Oh, oh my. Okay. Danielle and so, Nathaniel made the good comment that they think it's because of some rulers are made of plastic. Okay, so awesome. We might be working with different materials. We might have rulers that are slightly different shapes. And so our force and load is distributed differently on those. That's a great point. We also, when we place our pennies at the end of the ruler, I didn't tell you where to put them exactly. So I was putting mine pretty close to the end. Some people might have put theirs closer to the fulcrum. Once we get up high, it's hard to fit a ton of pennies, so they probably start to spread out a little bit more. So there is some variation between our experiments and our setup. So it makes sense that we're getting slightly different data back. For the most part though, we're in the same sort of range. We can get slightly similar results. But this is why it's really important to do experiments multiple times and try not to change anything in between.
right? So thank you all for doing this lever work with me this morning. I have a final bonus challenge for you to work on when we go offline. I am curious to see if anyone can lift their load, if anyone has enough pennies in their house to lift their load with the fulcrum at the 10 inch mark. And if you're able to do that, I would love for you to comment with how many pennies it took on our Facebook post about this activity. Um, I hope you'll join us tomorrow morning. We'll be coming to you live from the Science Center Animal Room where we're going to visit with our lionfish and talk a little bit about invasive species. And um, yeah, that's it for today. So thank you all so much for coming. Do some work and investigation around simple machines. See if you can find any levers in your daily life. There's levers that we don't even think about as levers, like brooms are actually levers because you have a fulcrum and you're sweeping and all that good stuff. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.